If you've ever looked at your energy bills and thought, that's crazy, there's no way I can afford this, there's got to be a better way, then this video is for you. Over the last two and a half years, I've slowly built up a solar setup that's gone from an idea to an experiment, and now it's moved on to something that powers our home, charges our EV, exports to the grid, and actually pays us more than we spend on energy. This isn't a sales pitch. It's not a plug and play system either. It's been a journey of learning, tweaking, and sometimes getting it wrong before actually getting it right. If you're thinking of going solar, scaling up, or just curious what this really looks like in the UK, we're in the south of the UK. Stick around, I'll show you. I didn't plan on going this deep with solar. What started off as a way to shave a bit off the bills quickly turned into something much bigger. I wanted to understand it properly, not just trust the market and spiel that I was given. Could I really run an EV, power our home and earn a return? Turns out, yes, you can. The system now includes 34 panels, three give energy, five kilowatt hybrid inverters and a DNO export limit of 15 kilowatts. Total cost, by 25K. But here's what really matters, what it's doing now. The long and short of it is this system now puts an extra five and a half grand roughly in my pocket every single year. I was one of the real hard sells when it came to solar. I, I was shopped around for ages. I couldn't find somebody I trusted, somebody I liked. And it was it was a real problem. There was prices were fluctuated so much. You got to do your research, but it does pay off and it is worth it. Now don't get me wrong, with two inverters, it ran just fine and we were still making profit. I think last year there was probably a 700 pound profit in terms of export. And that is also the 350 pound saving I would have been spending on electricity. So the amount of money that we're saving by having a system and the speed it's paying for itself is very, very good. Now just that to one inverter system, might take a little bit longer to pay back, but you're still gonna be saving. And eventually, well, you could be making money. It depends, again, on your position, how much you can export, and also your usage. This is why when people are quoting on solar, it's really hard to get it right, because the fine details really do matter. Let's look at the numbers and why April 2025 changed everything. Before April, my export was capped at 10 kilowatts. The system had potential, but it was throttled. When I added a third inverter, it split the arrays across three inverters, and I got permission to increase this to 15 kilowatts. Since then, it's been a bit of a beast. In the early part of the year, it was fine, but limited. Even on good days, the system couldn't push out everything I could generate. From April onwards, you can see the shift. My exports increased dramatically. Yes, there's more daylight, I understand that. You see stayed efficient, but now I'm earning more than I'm spending. In June and July, I exported over 426 pounds worth of electricity. That's two months where the system paid me and still powered everything, including the car. In July alone, I spent 85 pounds on electricity and exported 176 back to the grid. What you gotta take into account here is that I was spending 350 pounds a month on electricity. Now I'm making nearly 200 plus saving the 350 I was spending. So even though I said I spent 85 pounds on electricity, didn't actually spend that. That was taken automatically out of the export. Also charging the car is included in that import cost. Just for context, I do about 11 to 12,000 miles per year. So as I said, we used to pay 350 pounds a month for electricity with the EV charging, that would have gone up even higher. Now, it's covered. Let's bust a few common myths about solar. Number one, solar only works in hot countries. Well, that's not true. Um, in Cambridge, not exactly tropical, but with good placement and optimizers, I still get solar output, even when some panels are shaded. Number two, it's expensive. My system's massive and it was 25K. It's a big number for sure. But when you're getting over 5,000 a year back, that payback happens quicker than you think. And if electricity goes up, well, it becomes even quicker. Number three, it's unreliable. Honestly, it just works. Octopus handles my cheap EV charging, export is smooth, and most days, I don't even think about it. Even now I see stuff on social media, and I was one of those people like saying, is solar worth it? 100% it's worth it. Look, if you, my system's massive, I get that. 
and not everybody can do that. A smaller system, if you can cover most of your bills, it will pay for itself very quickly. You do not need to spend the money that I've spent on it. You could go with something, I don't know, maybe a five or 10 panel system. If you're doing your hot water and you're covering your electric costs and if you've got a battery to cover your expensive peak time usage and get a cheap rate overnight, it's a win. One of my favorite things with this system is Octopus Intelligent Go and that's where you plug your car in and it gives you off peak time. So it will tell the car to charge during a cheaper rate and they will give you cheaper rates. Every night you get from half 11 to half five in the morning and seven, seven P, seven and a half P a kilowatt to buy it. Bear in mind that export is 15 P. So you're making money. If you buy at the cheap rate all the time, that's how you make the money. You sell it, export it back to the grid. Don't know how long it's going to last for, but it's been working and it's been working for a couple of years and it's great. Also, when you get allocated those cheap times, you can charge everything, run everything in your house. Say if you've got hot tub, well, get it on heat or run your ovens or I don't know, sometimes a clean my oven or occasionally or put the wash machine on anything where you'd normally have consumption you can do it at these cheap rates also you can sign up for saving sessions i think that's what they're called where you get free electricity so you get an allocated time when you've got free electricity if you've got an inverter or you've got a car you plug it in charge your inverter free electricity you can sell it at 15p i am very aware it's a lot of money and as i said i'm not a salesperson for solar I think I've just found that it works and it works very well. If I could go back and give myself advice 10 years ago, it would have been get solar, put it on your roof, get an inverter, get a battery and start not paying bills and start making money. The UK energy market is a different ball game to the rest of the world. It's expensive. It feels a bit unfair and it's only going to go up. That's a concerning thing. I think it's due to go up again in October. Came down a little bit, but it's insane priced. But what that does, it means that your payback on a solar system actually becomes quicker. Now, my system is a little bit more complicated and this is where I've had to customize things. Adding the third inverter created a new challenge. Give Energy's management system still doesn't work with hybrids like mine, although they promised it two and a half years ago, still hasn't arrived. So we have to do something custom. That's where I've built my own logic using Home Assistant and Give TCP. Big thanks to the Facebook support group and especially Willie who helped me write automations that stop cross-charging between the inverters. Without that, the system would have fought itself and charged each different batteries. It's, it's, it's quite complicated, but now it runs fairly balanced day in and day out. And I just kind of ignore it now. If you're into things like that, I'll do another breakdown video of exactly what I've done and how I have done it. Actually, Give Energy don't recommend that you install more than one inverter. They've got to realize the people that do this tend to be upgrade freaks. Uh, maybe I'm making assumptions. Once you're in the ecosystem and you realize how beneficial it is, like I really wanted to add more and make more money, if you like, and not pay any electricity. I almost wanted to come off grid away from that dependence. But the upgrade process isn't that smooth. Adding two was fine. There wasn't much crosstalk and they just did a job. But as soon as we added the third, it became a tiny bit more complicated. However, I do think that is definitely a video for another day because it's quite technical. And here's a little thing that doesn't really get talked about enough. I've wired in an EPS into two of my inverters. So if the grid ever goes down, system kicks in and I can use those plug to power essential things in the house. Lights stay on if I want them to stay on. I could run into the fuse board. Fridge keeps running and we're left not scrambling for torches. It's that little bit of extra resilience that really gives me peace of mind when it comes to power cuts. And yeah, we do get quite a few. Maybe that's one of the questions people can ask. Do you get a lot of power cuts? We actually do. We maybe get five to ten a year in South Cambridge. I don't quite know why. It definitely seems to have gone up. The real test for this is through the winter, though. Shorter days, higher usage. It'll show what the system is really capable of. Now it's increased in size and the weather's not playing ball. I think last year, my worst day, I maybe generated two kilowatts. But then that's where the money that you make in the summer really comes into play and offsets those costs throughout the winter. It might be like a couple of hundred quid, but if you're generating over a thousand pounds in export, it's a no brainer. The system's not perfect, but it's as close as I'm gonna get right now. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll try and answer every one. If this helped, give it a like, maybe share it for someone who's thinking about getting solar. 
And if you want honest updates, subscribe and I'll try and do some more. However, I am wanting to move into more of the AI type of things. Thanks for watching. Whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, have a good one. And I will catch you later.